Hi! Here we are again talking more about revising. Um, today we're going to talk about revising for order, so make sure you have that particular handout pulled up or printed out or whatever. Um, revising for order focuses mostly on what I term the skeleton of the work. How do things go together? Where are they on the page? Um, all of those kind of things. Um, without a form, all the points just fall to the floor in a heap. It's a mess. Form supports meaning. Okay, so we know this with individual sentences, right? We have form. We have a capital letter at the beginning. We have a period or something permanent at the end. Um, things have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and so should your draft. Um, when you're revising for order, you have to determine what information stays and what goes. And think of it as a dividing line. There's all kinds of information out there on this particular topic or about this particular article. You have to decide and sift through and make sure that what you keep um, helps your focus go forward, helps your point go forward. And what you toss isn't um, meaningful for your draft. Okay. So the first part is sorting through your notes and all that kind of stuff and making sure that what you're keeping works. And by works, I mean it performs the way you want it to, and it gives your reader the information that they need in a way that they can understand. Okay, long and short. Um, second is determining the internal form. Okay, um, the material will help. Okay, but what kind of order should you use? Is it chronological? Um, is it thematic? Um, is there most important to least important? Um, any kind of overarching form will help your reader understand what's going on in the paper. Okay. Um, you can do all kinds of different ones, and I've got a whole bunch kind of running around listed here in the middle. And the material will, will influence both your internal and external form, but you're the one who has to keep it under control. Um, there are lots of ways to mess up a paper, right? Um, one of the hardest things is to know when to stop and what to include. So there's another way of looking at it, and this I think has been most helpful for my students in the past, is to think about your facts as players. Okay, um, So you've got these main points. You've got four, three, five, whatever main points, and each of them have to do something. So if you think of them as people or players, um, little sock puppets maybe, um, you can think about what they are, okay, make a list, why they're important to the story, okay, why are they important to your draft, why do you have to have main point number one, two, three, however many you have, why does each one go? If you can't come up with a good reason, then it probably doesn't need to be there, okay. And by a good reason, I mean not just that, okay, this is very important in information that somebody needs to know in order to make a good decision, but it's also perhaps the information that bridges main point one and main point three. I have to have this other piece of information in here or they don't make sense together. Okay. Um, and then the other part of this is what are those players doing? How are they interacting? What are they saying? How are they being important? Um, are they competing? Um, perhaps you have a proposal and you need to write why something is a problem and how is the best way to fix this problem. Well, somebody might say, oh, well, we need to do this. And you're like, no, that doesn't work. We already tried that. You have to be able to give them reasons why their ideas aren't important or aren't as good as yours. Um, and so this idea is more about clarity than it is about content. And so you have to think about, like I said, if you think about your main ideas as players and you have a set, right? So the first point is going to tell you how important this particular idea is and why it's important to perhaps the college at large. After that, then you've got to kind of line up your soldiers in a row so that you can take your reader along with you. 
Um, they have to have enough information about the problem. They have to have enough information about your research to know that, oh, okay, you've done your due diligence, so I can trust you. This particular player is the thing that gets you there. Does that make sense? I hope that you can go through these, these questions at the bottom. So who are the players? Which points or which people are the most important to this particular paper? Find out all you can about each of them. Now, not all of that information is going to end up in your paper because maybe your audience already knows all this. And again, we don't want to pat people on the head. We hate that. Um, find out where they meet, where they overlap. Take serious notes on how they differ as well. If you can't see a place where they all meet, perhaps they fit together like a daisy chain. Okay, maybe it's not you know, a conference table, everybody's here together. Maybe it's if I do one, then I can do two, then I can do three, then I can do four. Um, we like linear progression. Um, it's not really how most of our brains work, but we like it anyway. Um, and so we have to figure things out. Um, what are these players doing again? What are their most important incidents in the material? Where does it go? How does it get there? Um, a lot of times I've students put a lot of information in the paper um, and not all of it's necessary and not all of it makes sense in the order that it's in. So make sure that you read again for your audience from their point of view and you make sure that you've given them enough fodder to go with. Okay. Um, walk through this, the questions on this one, make sure that you're taking lots of notes and keeping track of what you're doing so that you can revise your own paper. That's the main point here, right? Okay, so revising for order. If you have questions, you know how to reach me.